congratulations. You transformed some cells and you have a plate. It's got some, well, mostly blue colonies, but you've got some white ones in there too. So that's good, right? You have your uh, recombinant DNA? Maybe. So what we need to do next is confirm that it's actually the case. This is what colony PCR is for. So what is colony PCR? Well, colony PCR is basically regular PCR, but you're not going through the trouble of actually extracting DNA. You're simply taking a whole colony, lysing the cells, and then you're just simply adding all the PCR agents to this and running a PCR on it. It's very quick and easy, and you get an answer within a few hours. So, as the name suggests, you need to start with a colony, at least one colony. But in our case, you'll pick at least two. When picking colonies, you'll be using your inoculating loop. You need to make sure that it's sterile. So first you will flame the loop. Uh, make sure that you put it through the hottest part of the flame, which is the most blue. Uh, hold it in there for a few seconds. It doesn't have to be very long. Uh, it's just long enough to kill off whatever might be on the surface of that loop. And then make sure that you cool it down before you use it to pick any colonies. Now, in this case here, Okonye is going to be picking a colony from her plate, and I'd like to point out the way that she's holding the plate. She's going to keep it upside down for the most part, and in this way she's actually minimizing the risk that the plate might get contaminated with something that might be in the air. Now, it's important to understand that one colony is basically a cluster of millions of cells, and all of those cells are exact duplicates of one cell that was put on there originally which means that all the cells in that one colony have the exact same plasmid. Okay, so when you are picking your colonies, make sure that you pick only a single colony at a time, then sterilize your loop again, and pick a second colony and put that into a separate tube. Do not mix your colonies together. Once you've picked your colony, you're going to put that into your epitube with TE. And so you don't have to worry about getting all of the cells into the TE. Even a few cells will be more than enough, but again, feel free to get, you know, the whole colony in there if you want to. Once you have all your samples ready to go, you will place those samples onto a heating block at 95 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. While you're waiting for your samples to be ready, you can work on preparing your PCR master mix. Now what is a master mix? Well, recall that the last time you set up your PCR reactions, your protocol said to basically do this. And you had to add each component to your tubes individually and you set up a couple of tubes this way. It was time consuming, there was a lot of pipetting involved. This is how you would set up PCR if you were testing for a different gene in each sample and needed to use different primers and different conditions in each case. Now in this lab, since you will be testing each of your samples for the exact same gene and therefore you will be using the exact same conditions including primers etc and the only difference will be the template that will be different, the template DNA, it is useful to introduce you to the concept of a master mix. A PCR master mix is commonly used uh, when you set up PCR reactions, where the only difference between the reactions will be the template itself, like in cases where, for example, you are screening multiple samples for the presence of your DNA sequence of interest. Okay? So again, you're looking at the exact same conditions, just different sources of the template. In cases like this, you will take all of these components that will be the same in all tubes and then determine how many reactions you will need to run. So for example, if you need to screen 10 samples by PCR, you would actually need 10 times the amount listed here. But there's always the chance that there will be some pipetting error when setting up your reactions. So we try to account for that possibility by making enough of the master mix to prepare the needed number of reactions plus one. So in the case of this example, we would actually take the volume of each of the components on this list and multiply it by 11 instead of 10. So your master mix tube would get 55 microliters of the buffer, 110 microliters of the DNTP mixture, 22 microliters of the MGCL2, and then 22 microliters of each of the primers. Okay. In our case, we will add the enzyme individually, so that will not be part of the master mix. Not only will this help to reduce pipetting errors, but it also cuts down the amount of waste that is generated during the lab. You will end up using a lot fewer pipette tips. Now, just to clarify, the numbers that I just gave you are fine if you're setting up 10 reactions. 
but in the lab, you are likely to be setting up a different number of PCR tubes. So please adjust the math to fit your situation. So if you're setting up five reactions, then your PCR master mix should contain enough for six reactions. If you're setting up three reactions, your master mix should contain enough for four reactions, and so on. Once your master mix is ready, you can go back to your heating block and retrieve your samples. Now keep in mind that any time that you heat samples at high heat for any length of time, some of the liquid that's in your tube will evaporate and it will be in the vapor phase. And so whenever you're doing any kind of heating, the next step should be to put your tubes back on ice. This will allow all the liquid to condense and settle on the sides of the tubes. After this, you will spin your test tubes down to collect all the liquid. And in our case here, it will also help to separate the supernamed, which will contain the plasma DNA, from the rest of the lysed cell components. Once you have completed your centrifugation, you are ready to set up your PCR. Now in this case, because you have a master mix, your PCR setup will be much simpler. Into each PCR tube, you will simply add the appropriate amount of template, some master mix, and the TAC polymerase. And once you've done that, you're finished. Just take your samples over to the thermocycler, get the program started, and you're done. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.